this is uh, this is a presentation. I'm stepping in for um, Alan Winfield, who, who I know was was very very sorry he couldn't be here today with you. Um, but I'm I'm pleased that I can I can step in and present some of this work on robot accident investigation. Um, this is uh, a project that's being led by uh, Professor Marina Jurotka at, at Oxford uh, with Alan Winfield at, at Bristol and Helen Webb, Katie Winkle and Ulrich Wings at, at Oxford. Um, and it's about what should we do when robots have accidents? Um, particularly, how can we learn from what, what goes wrong and um, how can we improve safety in the future? Um, I'd better just check. You can. Can you see the the picture changed? And it's it's a picture of a, a lady in a yes, perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so so imagine imagine um, this is your 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 mum, your elderly mother. Let's call her Rose, who lives in a, a, a home independently, um, but she has an assisted living robot, um, and the robot can fetch her drinks and remind her to take medicines, um, help her keep in touch with family, and and, and those sorts of things. Uh, and one afternoon, you, you get a call from a, a, a neighbour um, who wants to let you know that she would popped around and and saw that your your mother had collapsed uh, uh, on the floor, and she'd had to call uh, the paramedics, the, the, the emergency services. Um, the paramedics had found that the robot was wandering around apparently aimlessly in 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 the house. Um, and and one of the functions of the robot should have been to call for help if, if it if it uh, determines that there was there was a problem and it it, it, it hadn't done this um, so obviously your, your concerns would be well why why hasn't the, obviously for your mother primarily but also what you know what why why didn't the, the the robot do what it was meant to do and call for help and and also had it made matters worse had it had it bumped into her while she was um, on the ground had it had it actually caused the accident to to, to start with. Um, now this is only a, a fictional scenario, obviously, but uh, but this sort of thing could could conceivably happen today. And 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 uh, as it stands, we're essentially reliant on the goodwill of robot manufacturers um, to to investigate and and understand what went wrong. And and it's quite likely that many of these uh, manufacturers probably may not have the, the the capacity or the processes or, or the mechanisms in place to actually conduct these on-site investigations into into um, adverse adverse events um, and at present there, there isn't a, an established approach to how we should understand and investigate uh, robot accidents now this is important because accidents are inevitable um, there are isn't a great deal of data on, on, on the subject. Here, here's some. There, there's a, a database on the industrial accidents of, of the in the U.S., um, which show a, a number of fatalities and, and other injuries related to industrial robots. Um, uh, but we know that as as robots are obviously increasingly leaving their industrial settings, um, the, the the scope for for accidents is is uh, is much greater. Um, this is a, a, an example of, uh, uh, I suppose, a very minor minor event, which some of you may have remembered from, from a few years ago, the security robot, which um, on uh, Stanford uh, uh, shopping mall knocked, knocked down or bumped into a, a, a toddler. Um, and this back in 2016. Um, we only actually found out about this because obviously it, it made the press. It was a, a big public event locally at, at the time. Um, and, and obviously the robot Took it pretty pretty tough a year later. It seems to have thrown itself into a a, a fountain down the steps um, in Washington D.C. But um, but you know th these minor events um, we can expect them to, to happen a, a, a lot um, and much more seriously, more catastrophically. We know there have been a a, a number of uh, fatalities uh, caused by auto well, semi-automated uh, driving systems in, in vehicles like uh, Teslas uh, with um, the. Model S that went under a, a truck back in 2016, and, and the Model 3 that did the same thing last year. Um, the, the Uber autonomous vehicle, their development vehicle um, in Tempe, um, which uh, knocked down and, and, and killed the, the first pedestrian um, in an autonomous vehicle accident. Um, so, so we know that these that these things are happening, and, and they're and, and they're they're serious. We know that also that, that this, this matters a lot because while these accidents are rare at the moment, um, primarily because robots are kept pretty much in cages in, in industrial settings, as, as they increasingly 
uh, start operating in in our messy social world, uh, the frequency of uh, the potential for for accident events is is going to be much greater, and the the, the severity as well is potentially going to be be much 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 greater. Um, and in, in addition, in fact, the, the the type of harms that might be caused by robots, we've we've heard um, from Professor Broadbent around the, the sort of psychological uh, or potential psychological harms, I, I suppose, caused caused by caused by robots. So, so there's there's a wide range of of risks of, uh, associated with accidents of of social robots, which. Um, we're looking uh, uh, to, to, to see coming down the line in, in the future. Now, accident investigation primarily is, is about learning. It's about understanding what happened, how systems can be improved and, and how, how safety, um, safety can be improved and, and risks can be reduced. Um, in, in this work and in the practice of accident investigation or safety investigation itself, the focus is, is on learning. It's, it's not about determining liability or assigning blame. Um, those, those, uh, those two activities tend to be, uh, there we go, start my video, sorry. Ah, oh, you can see, you couldn't see me. <laughs> okay, so apologies about that. Right. Um, so uh, accident investigation for learning is often very, uh, very distinctly separated from processes that seek to, to allocate responsibility or, or um, determine liability, pr primarily because if you're conducting, for example, a, a police investigation, people, people react uh, in a very different way to if you're, if you're trying to understand the, you know, the, the, how you can adapt and improve a, a, a technical system. Um, so, so there's a very clear distinction between uh, learning and improvement, which is what which is what we're interested in here, and and the the, the more legalistic processes of um, assigning fault and and liability. Um, so, if you're conducting a, an accident investigation, there are fundamentally three core questions that you're you're trying to trying to answer. The first is is um, essentially essentially what what happened. You know, the, the factual questions. So, what happened to, to whom, with what, with what effect. Um, the second question is why it, it, it involves explanation. You know, what, why did these things happen? What sort of interactions? What sort of factors were, were, were at play? And the third is 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 the very practical question of how, how can you improve? You know, what should be done to to improve um, improve the, the safety of, of systems? So the 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 why uh, the what the why and the and the how the three the three core questions. Now, accident investigation has a very long history. Um, this is this is a picture of the NTSB, the National Transport Safety Board, investigators on site in San Francisco, the triple seven um, that had a, a, a an accident on uh, on approach and landing. Um, this is actually Deborah Hurstman, who at the time was the chair of the NTSB. She went on to be a director of safety at Waymo, uh, the autonomous vehicle. Um, Company and you can see you won't be able to see the details, but in the top the top corner of the slide there, that's the very first independent uh, accident investigation report published anywhere in the world, 1912. Um, so there's over a hundred years of uh, professional and methodological uh, experience and and, and work um, that's accumulated around how to very rigorously and systematically analyze analyze adverse events, um, and it's still a, a very active field. So a lot of the work that I've been involved in on the last five or so years has been making the case for and, and helping uh, develop a, a new investigation body in healthcare in, in, in the UK, um, which has learned a lot from other sectors like, like aviation. So that's the, that's the backdrop for, for this project, um, the RoboTips project, which is funded by the EPSRC for, for five years, um, that led by Marina, Marina Drucker at, at, at Oxford. And one of the core elements of this project is to develop an accident investigation framework for social robots, uh, defined, defined very, very broadly. And there's, there's two, two parallel strands to this. The, the first is understanding what the technical aspects of an investigation approach might need and the other is understanding what the social uh, and human aspects uh, might might be so to first think about the, the technical side of things often the, the the key thing that is needed is is data um, after after a, a major event um, certainly in aviation in the railways uh, and, and other sectors um, there will be using the event recorder, the, the flight data recorder, or the, or the black box. Um, this is the black box, actually orange. Uh, this, is, this is one that was um, uh, involved with the Airbus that went into the Atlantic uh, just over 
10 years ago. It took them two years to recover this, um, this black box. It was, it was so deep in, in, the, in the ocean. But uh, Marina and Alan have, have made the case and, and published, um, published uh, uh, various papers arguing, I think, very coherently for the, 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 the need for uh, an ethical black box uh, to, to be implemented in all robotic systems. Um, you won't be able to see the, the different um, parts, parts of the slide here, but the, uh, the, 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 the case, the, the case that, that they make, I think, very, very coherently is that the, every robotic system should, should have um, a, a black box that's able to continuously record time-stamped log of, of the internal state of, of the system, uh, key decisions that, that are made, um, interactions sampled, sampled input and sensor data um, so that it can be used in the, in the event of, a, of an accident. And the, the, the project um, here will be looking at what a black box could look like um, for driverless cars, uh, for educational or toy robots, um, and for assisted, assisted living robots. So the core uh, output of the project uh, is really going to be uh, developing a specification um, for uh, an ethical black box for, for, for these robotic um, systems and, and making, that, making that freely available and, and working with partners to understand how, how, how that could be implemented. The second aspect of the investigation framework is, is the social or uh, social and human perhaps organizational side of, of, of the process. Um, now accidents investigation is, is a very is a very uh, oops, is a very um, human uh, uh, <laughs> intensive activity um, which requires uh, a great deal of professional expertise, different methods, um, forensic analysis approaches, and, and a, lot of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of complex work that needs to be done to, to piece together what happened and why and, and, and how it should be, how it should be um, addressed. So the, the, the Robotex project is going to be running three simulated accident scenarios and de develop quite sophisticated simulations of, of events with, again, assisted living robots, uh, educational robots and, and, and driverless vehicles, um, and actually working using human participants to, to understand you know, what, what, what witnesses would encounter and what information they'd be able to provide, um, what, what the experience would be for, for subjects of, of a potential accident, um, and also what the members of the investigation team would, would need to do to, to investigate uh, these, sorts of, these sorts of events. To put that into, into practice, um, if we go back and think about uh, this, this, um, this individual, our, 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 our mum uh, and, and her, her assisted living robot, um, to think about what, you know, what, what, what happened here, what, why did it happen and, and how, might we, how might we improve things um, are, are, are three questions. The, the first question, if we think about what is the evidence available? Well, primarily uh, a lot of the evidence would, would come from witnesses, you know, the, the neighbour who found Rose on the floor and the paramedic who may notice what the robot was doing, that, that um, the individual Rose wasn't wearing her full bracelet to, to, to send an alert, um, perhaps the cleaner or, or the maintenance engineers about how they've been how they've been um, uh, interacting with the, the robots. And also, you know, this story has a happy ending. R Rose herself, after recovering, reports that she was trying to reach something in a, in a kitchen cupboard, climbing on a chair, fell down. But she, she distinctly remembers calling out for a prolonged period and, and you know, no, no, had no response from, from the robot. You'd also have documentation, things like perhaps maintenance schedules, cleaning protocols or procedures and those, those sorts of things. But critically, the, 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 the key information which, um, which a huge amount of analysis depends on is what comes out of the, the black box. Um, so here this is just a, a, again an illustrative example of what a, a black box might tell you about this, sorts of, this sort of event. Um, so we've, we've marked up the, the orange uh, events in, in the timeline uh, interactions with, with Rose, with, with the user, the, the blue events are the movement of the robot. Um, that would obviously be uh, in sort of a, a, a very precise uh, coordinates of uh, uh, and um, data on on different actions, um, and, and green items are network communication of, of what the what the robot was up to. So it lost communication at various various times with its um, 
with the hub in in the home. Um, so the the why the analysis why you know what to understand why things have happened uh, often involves quite sophisticated uh, analysis methods. Now some of these are, are very simple. The, the, the most obvious uh, sort of metaphor that's often used is that, that the Swiss cheese, uh, the idea where a, a number of a number of failures occur at different levels of the system from active technical failures like a, a sensor failing or some sort of inappropriate uh, human behavior at the sharp end through to perhaps failures in maintenance, uh, perhaps problems in manufacturing, uh, problems in the design or, or the regulation. And, and the, these problems line up and, and can cause, a, can cause a, 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 some serious outcome. Obviously, there's a much more sophisticated uh, approach of putting these into, into practice and with a variety of different tools and techniques to actually model events and explain all of the, the system interactions. Um, this is just a, a simple example of, of the, this lady who's, who's fallen down and, and her assisted living robot uh, failed to, to provide assistance. Um, we've just used an example why because analysis here which allows you to essentially um, map out the, the system interactions and the, the contributory factors um, underneath it. essentially these, these two top level events, uh, rows falling off the chair and the, the, the robot failing, failing to respond. So the, the final point uh, of the, the process is around then, so how would you generate recommendations? What, what, what is there to, to, to improve? Um, I mean, these are just, again, the, the sort of illustrative recommendations that you might expect out of a, out of a robot accident investigation. Um, for example, you, you may, be, uh, may be recommending that backup communication systems are, are put in place if, if, if there aren't already, um, that the, the home hub itself perhaps can send an emergency call uh, when it de detects a fall rather than routing it through the, the robot, um, that you in increase the sensitivity of the robot's microphones perhaps if it's in another room and it, it, it couldn't hear what had happened. Um, you might want to put the, uh, other, other functionality into the, into the robot so that, um, so that it, it reminds users to put their full bracelet on, perhaps checks, checks visually that, that, it's, that it's on their wrist. Um, and then other, other organizational type of interventions like developing uh, uh, protocols around, well, not using disinfectants on the robot sensors, which can, which can damage them, for, for example. So that's a, that's a very quick run through of what, what this might look like uh, if, you were, if you were conducting a robot accident investigation. This is obviously a very, very simplified example. And we've not, we've not gone very deep down into, into the, the layers of potential, uh, potential failures and contributory factors. But the, at the end of the day, we're, we're, um, we're uh, I suppose very, very keen to, to promote this urgent need that uh, uh, robots need to have their accidents investigated just as any other industry any other industry does and there's a whole technical and social infrastructure that, that needs to be built uh, around that so that's the that's the focus of um of this project um there's alan who i know is is very sad not to be here today and, and sends his apologies but I, i'm glad i could step in and give you a bit of a flavor of some of this work even even if my my system security settings are uh, adamant that I, I can't can't share share my presentation fully with you. But thank you very much. Thank you for your talk, Professor McCarthy. And